Case number IT 00390T, the Prosecutor versus Munchilo Krasnick. Thank you, Mr. Registrar. This trial chamber is sitting today to deliver its judgment in the case of the prosecution versus Monchilo Krasnick. For the purposes of this hearing, the chamber will summar summarize briefly its findings. We emphasize that this is a summary only, and that the authoritative account of the Chamber's finding is to be found in the written judgment, which will be made available at the end of this session. Mr. Kreisnik stood trial for one count of violations of the laws or customs of war, namely murder, one count of genocide, one count of complicity in genocide, and five counts of crimes against humanity, namely persecution, extermination, murder, deportation, and forced transfer. He's charged with having committed, planned, instigated, ordered, or otherwise aided and abetted the crimes, as well as failing to take necessary and reasonable measures to prevent such acts or to punish the perpetrators where he had a duty to do so. The indictment covers 35 municipalities in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The crimes charged are alleged to have been committed in all 35 municipalities between the 1st of July 1991 and 30 December 1992. Mr. Kreisnik was born on 20th of January 1945 in Novigrad municipality in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Mr. Kreisnik studied economics and worked as an economist in various companies in Sarajevo. He first met Radovan Karadzic in 1983. On the 12th of July 1990, Mr. Kreisnik became a member of the Serbian Democratic Party, the SDS. On 20 September 1990, he was elected deputy to the Bosnia-Herzegovina Assembly, and on 20 December 1990, he became president of that assembly. The chamber will now spend a few words on the political background of Bosnia and Herzegovina and of the emergent Bosnian Serb Republic. <coughs> The first multi-party elections in Bosnia and Herzegovina were held on the 18th of November 1990. The political parties, representing the three dominant ethnic groups, won the majority of seats, namely the SDS, the Croatian Democratic Union, known as HDZ, and the Party of Democratic Action, which was the main political party of the Bosnian Muslims, known as the SDA. These three parties reached an agreement among themselves on a formula for the distribution of power. Positions in all government organs and public institutions at the central and lower levels were distributed in accordance with party quotas. Nonetheless, mistrust, fear, and resentment grew among the three main <coughs> ethnic groups in Bosnia and Herzegovina. As a consequence, in early 1991, Bosnian Croats and Bosnian Muslims began organizing armed groups. At around the same time, the SDS began actively arming the Serb population. Bosnian Serbs also relied on the Yugoslav People's Army for protection. On 15 October 1991, the Bosnia-Herzegovina Assembly passed a resolution on the sovereignty of Bosnia and Herzegovina, despite strong opposition from the Serb deputies. Ten days later, the SDS formed the Bosnian Serb Assembly with Mr. Kryznik as president. The Bosnian Serb Assembly began establishing parallel government structures. The Bosnian Serb Assembly adopted the constitution of the Bosnian Serb Republic on the 28th of February 1992. The constitution laid out the structure of the Bosnian Serb Republic. 
The Bosnian Serb government was led by the Prime Minister, who at the relevant time was Branko Djeric. It consisted of 13 ministries. The Bosnian Serb Assembly consisted of 82 deputies, the majority of whom were SDS members. On the 27th of March 1992, the Assembly created the National, National Security Council, or SNB. Radovan Karadzic was the president of the SNB, while Mr. Kweisnik, as president of the Assembly, was an ex officio member. The SNB held joint meetings with the Bosnian Serb government for the purpose of taking decisions on military, political, and administrative matters. The SNB also issued instructions to and received reports from local territorial defense units and municipal authorities. On the 12th of May 1992, the Assembly replaced the SNB with a three-member presidency to function until a president of the Bosnian Serb Republic could be elected. Radovan Karadzic, Nikola Koljevic, and Beljana Plavšić were appointed to this presidency. They, in turn, elected Karadzic as the president of the presidency. The SNB stopped functioning shortly thereafter. Although Mr. Kreisnik was not formally a member of the presidency, he attended all <coughs> but possibly one session of the presidency between May and December 1992. During these sessions, <coughs> Mr. Kreisnik was not a mere spectator. For example, he was responsible for the economy. Later, he was also responsible for liaising and coordinating with war commissioners who were appointed by the presidency and were in charge of municipalities. <coughs> Mr. Kreisnik had a sig significant input in the presidency's workings. He conducted himself as a regular member of the presidency and was accepted as such by the other members. Prime Minister Djeric also attended sessions of the presidency. The Chamber is satisfied that the Bosnian Serb Presidency operated in fact with five members from its inception on the 12th of May 1992. The Presidency wielded great power in the Bosnian Serb Republic beyond that of its constitutional powers. For example, the Minister of Interior Micho Stanisic and the Minister of Justice, Momcila Mandic, both reported directly to and to constructions from the presidency. This, in turn, led to a weak government. Nevertheless, the government still had significant influence over many issues arising during the conflict, as is explained more fully in the judgment. The presidency also controlled the Bosnian Serb army, known as the VRS, which was established by the Assembly on the 12th of May 1992. Pursuant to the Constitution, the president of the Bosnian Serb Republic was the supreme commander of the VRS. General Ratko Mladic was the commander of the VRS main staff. He would consult with the presidency regularly and the presidency would frequently make decisions on military matters. The presidency also had an extensive contact with municipal authorities, much of which came through Mr. Kreisnik. As president of the Bosnian Serb Assembly, Mr. Kreisnik was in close contact with the assembly deputies who were also active on the municipal level. The Assembly's composition and operating methods thus ensured that the decision-making process was heavily influenced by SDS policy. Mr. Kreisnik, both as President of the Assembly 
and as a prominent member of the SDS, played an important role in affecting the SDS influence over the Bosnian Serb Assembly. The Chamber has also heard evidence that expressions of ethnic hatred and scaremongering in the Bosnian Serb Assembly were condoned by Mr. Kwajsnik. The transcripts of sessions brought to the attention of the Chamber show that never once during the indictment period did he chastise deputies for insults to other national groups. On occasions, he engaged in this type of language himself. Mr. Kwajsnik's authority as president of the Bosnian Serb Assembly made it easy for him to propagate views on ethnic separation. <coughs> the Chamber will now discuss in some detail the acts which occurred on the ground during this takeover of power in the United Municipalities. When the independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina was recognized by the international community in early April 1992, Bosnian Serbs began to seize power in the municipalities through the use of force. The Chamber finds that from 18th March 1992 onwards, there was an attack directed against the Bosnian Muslim and Bosnian Croat civilian population living in the 35 indictment municipalities. The attack included a wide range of discriminatory measures, such as the imposition of curfews, the setting up of barricades and checkpoints, where members of these ethnic groups were regularly stopped and searched. Searches of the houses of Muslims and Croats and dismissals from employment. Beginning in April, Serb forces attacked Muslims and Croats living in towns, villages and smaller settlements, most of which were in undefended and contained no military targets. Muslims and Croats were mistreated and killed. Men were often arrested and taken to detention centres while women and children were forced to leave their homes and were either detained or forced to leave the municipality. Their homes were then either looted and destroyed by Serb forces or appropriated by Serb authorities. Serb forces also destroyed cultural monuments and sacred sites of importance to the Muslim and Croat populations. The conditions in many detention centres where Muslims and Croats were held were intolerable, without sufficient food, water, medical care and hygiene facilities. The detainees were often beaten and sometimes raped by members of the Serb forces, some of whom were employed as guards, while others were allowed access to detention centres. Many detainees suffered physical and psychological injuries and health problems. Many detainees died as a result. Many detainees were also deliberately killed by members of the paramilitaries, police or other Serb forces. The Chamber will illustrate the events summarized above through a description of events in the municipality of Zvornik. Zvornik was a municipality with a Muslim majority population. The Serb crisis staff mobilized the Serb members of the territorial defense in early April 1992. Paramilitary forces, including Arkans men, Seychelles men, Yellow Wasps and Red Berets began to arrive in the municipality. They had been invited by Branko Grujic, the president of the crisis staff. The police in the municipality was divided along ethnic lines. The 
Serb members of the Swarni police relocated to Karakai, where the Serb crisis staff was located. The Serb police and the paramilitary forces erected barricades throughout the municipality. Serb forces, including members of the police, the territorial defense, the Yugoslav, Yugoslav People's Army and paramilitary groups, then launched an armed attack against Svornik town. The Serb civilian population had left town prior to the attack. Svornik town was taken over by the Serb forces within a day. The Serbian flag was hoisted on top of the main town mosque. Many civilians were killed during the attack and many others fled in fear. After the attack, Arkans men looted the homes and piled dozens of dead bodies, including the bodies of children, women and elderly persons, onto trucks. More dead bodies lay in the streets. In late April or early May 1992, Serb forces demanded the surrender of the Muslim village of Divic, also located, located in Svornik municipality. However, before the deadline for surrender had expired, the Serb forces launched an attack on the town. Approximately a thousand Muslims fled towards a nearby village. When some of them later attempted to return, they were turned away by Serb forces. In late May, 400 400 to 500 Muslims from Divic village, including women, children and elderly persons, were forced onto buses by members of the Yellow Wasps and told that they would be taken to Muslim territory. They were released in Jernivr and departed on foot. In the beginning of June 1992, Muslim police officers in the Muslim village of Kosluk in Svornik municipality were forced to surrender their uniforms and weapons to a Serb police officer. Later that month, an attack was launched on the village. A large number of Serb soldiers, territorial defense and paramilitary units entered Kosluk in tanks and other military vehicles. Among the Serb forces were Branko Grujic, president of the Svornik crisis staff, and Jova Mijatovic, a member of the Svornik crisis staff and a deputy in the Bosnian Serb assembly. They informed the Muslim villagers that they had one hour to leave or they would be killed. They also told them that they could not take any personal belongings with them and forced them to sign statements surrendering their property. On the same day, a convoy of vehicles, organized by the Serbs, transported approximately 1,800 persons out of the municipality. In early June, Serbs were seen moving into villages in Svornik municipality from which Muslims had been expelled. Most of the 19 Muslim monuments in Svornik municipality have been damaged or completely destroyed through shelling or by use of explosives during the attacks in April and May 1992. Muslims were placed in detention in several locations in Svornik and subjected to severe physical, psychological and sexual abuse. In early June, a paramilitary group used spiked metal bars and chains to assault the detainees being held at a facility in the village of Celopec. Some detainees were forced to beat each other and three were murdered by the guards. The Yellow Wasps paramilitary group killed at least five of the detainees. One man had his ear cut off Others had their fingers cut off, and at least two men were sexually mutilated. 
the Karakai Technical School in Svornik municipality became a deten detention center for Muslim men and was called, guarded by Serb soldiers. Over the course of several days, many of the detainees were severely beaten. About, about 160 detainees were later removed in small groups and executed by the Serb guards. Incidents like the ones just described also occurred in the other indictment municipalities, namely Banja Luka, Bielina, Bileća, Bosanska Krupa, Bosanski Novi, Bosanski Petrovac, Bratunac, Brčko, Chajnice, Čelinac, Doboj, Donjivakov, Voča, Katsko, Hacici, Ilija, Ilias, Kluč, Kalinovic, Kotovaros, Nevezinje, Novigrad, Novo Serievo, Pale, Priedor, Prinavor, Rogatica, Sanski Most, Sokolac, Teslic, Trnovo, Vigigrad, Vlasenica, and Fogosha. The chamber now turns to its legal findings regarding these acts. The chamber has found <coughs> that the following crimes committed in the indictment municipalities have been proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Extermination as a, crimes against, a crime against humanity was committed against Bosnian Muslims and against Bosnian Croats to a lesser degree in 14 of the indictment municipalities. Murder as a crime against humanity was committed against Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats in 28 of the indictment municipalities. Having qualified all killings as murder or extermination under Article 5 of the Tribunal Statute, there is no need to make findings under the alternative charge of murder as a war crime. Deportation as a crime against humanity was proven to have been committed against Bosnian Muslims and Bosnian Croats in 17 of the indictment municipalities. And forced transfer as a crime against humanity was committed in 25 of the indictment municipalities. <coughs> 